Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall, shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. All of the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be the day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to be washed, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Monday, Thursday is really a rather schizophrenic day. It has two major themes that are competing with one another for the spotlight. Foot washing is one, and the institution of the Eucharist is the other. Liturgically, if you look at the way we lay out the prayer book and the way the, the liturgy is structured and, and the way the lectionary is structured, even though John's Gospel doesn't talk about the institution of the Eucharist, the real focus liturgically is the institution of the Eucharist. The foot washing is kind of a, I don't want to say it afterthought, but yeah, it's, it's an extra thought, let's put it that way. John's Gospel doesn't talk about the institution of the Eucharist. In fact, if you read through John's Gospel carefully, you will see no, no institution of the Eucharist. The Last Supper is focused on the foot washing in John's Gospel. The other three Gospels focus on the institution of the Eucharist. Most scholars agree the reason for that is that John already told us that story back at the feeding of the 5,000 that that was his Eucharist story. And why would he repeat himself? We Anglicans are very incarnational at our base theology. 
we are also somewhat systematic about our theology. In being incarnational, that means our theology should be grounded in reality, in substance. If you want to understand what's going on in the Eucharist, you need to start with bread and wine, tangible things that we can touch, taste, smell, and build from there. If you want to understand the theology of marriage, start with the clasped hands of the two people involved. Start with the love that they share for one another. Begin from there and build your theology outward from that, from the touch that they feel. We are systematic in that our different theologies should inform one another. In other words, our theology of the Eucharist doesn't just stand by itself. It stands in the context of our theology of creation, our theology of what it is to be human, our theology of what it is to be church, our theology of what it is to be married. All of these theologies stand as a chorus, if you will, of voices, informing one another, supporting one another, and helping us to understand deeper realities in each because we have looked at the others. In the Eucharist, we begin with bread and wine. The meal that happened at the Last Supper, depending on if you read the Synoptic Gospels or John's Gospel, was either the the Passover meal or the meal the evening before that, the Day of Preparation meal. Either way, this is a festival meal. A very structured meal, yes, but also a meal that is based in the family either the family of birth or the family of choice. But you gather with family for this meal, and you take bread, and you say a prayer to God over the bread, and you distribute it to all present. And as the meal is coming to its close, you take a cup of wine, and again you say prayer to God, and the wine is shared among all present. It was Dom Gregory Dix in the late 1800s who said, if you really want to understand what Jesus was doing when he instituted the Eucharist, you have to remember, Jesus was a Jew. Look at what the Jews were doing. That's what he was doing. It is that table meal, that sharing among family. I love the way we say the fraction, the, 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 uh, the words of institution at Tilshbeck. Instead of saying, do this in remembrance of me, we say, do this with me and with all our relatives. Do this with me and with all of our relatives. In the Eucharist, we take the bread and the wine to the altar. There we say a prayer to God. We bless it. We break it, and we give it back to the congregation. Now, still bread and wine, but now so much more, so much more. In the same way, when we come to the Eucharist, we are taken out of the world to the altar. There we are blessed by God. In some undefinable way, we are broken. And then we are given back to the world to be the ambassadors, to be the agents of God in the world. This is what tonight is about. This is also act one of a three-act play. In the classic three-act play, in act two, everything goes wrong. In act three, everything gets resolved. In Act 1, you're introduced to everyone. You're introduced to all the characters. You build a relationship with them. Tomorrow is Good Friday. Everything goes wrong. 
the great vigil or Easter morning, if you're not a late-night person, is Act 3. Everything turns out right. Tonight, we get introduced to the family. We gather in an intimate way and share a meal with one another as we begin to walk this journey together. Fellow servants of our Lord Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example, but none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come remembering his admonition, that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you, if you do them.
The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. The prayers of the people are Form 2, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding bishop, Michael, for our bishop, Jonathan, for our retired bishop, Craig, for Barbara and Brenda, who are in the ordination process, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, for the hungry, the oppressed, and for those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found in him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Father Paul, Gwet, Lynette, Don, Georgia, Rex, Milt, and all caregivers. I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays. Paula, Patty, Gwet, Kyle, and for those celebrating anniversaries, Matt and Deb. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. God's peace.
Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
Our service continues on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, <coughs> Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Mm-hmm. 